It was a scandal that blew up in 2019, labored through investigations and interrogations in 2020, and emerged above the fold to start 2021. We're looking at the findings of the City Council's Special Investigative Committee on the attempt to sell JEA. Plus, the continuing controversy about impeaching former President Donald Trump, even though he's gone from the White House. Senator Rick Scott will join us on This Week in Jacksonville. Thank you for joining us today. The new year brings the anticipated report about JEA. It was more than a year ago a committee was commissioned in the city council to look at the ITN, or Invitation to Negotiate. Also under the microscope, a long-term incentive plan that would benefit participants based on the amount of a sale. Jacksonville's publicly owned utility is worth billions of dollars. So the report says the committee interviewed dozens of witnesses and examined more than 600,000 documents. In its conclusion, the report says the committee only looked at legislative matters and will let the Department of Justice handle any potential criminal charges. It says JEA did not fully disclose documents in a timely manner. It goes on to say that some people, including political consultant Tim Baker, JEA board member Camille Lee Johnson, and city council members Aaron Bowman and Leanna Cumber did not fully cooperate. Right after the report was released, I asked the mayor's office if Mr. Curry would join us. They provided this statement instead. It said, this report captures what Mr. Busey has already released and what has already been reported by local media over the course of several months. Conjecture, opinion, and unfounded speculation at the price tag to taxpayers of $1.8 million. Steve Busey is the committee's lead counsel. Uh, News from Jacks also reached out to the attorney for former JEA CEO Aaron Zahn. Part of his statement reads, uh, Mr. Zahn vehemently disagrees with the disparaging and defamatory references, innuendos, and coerced statements contained in the report. The truth around JEA's strategic planning process is complex and definitively involved the mayor, city council, the entire board, Office of General Counsel, and countless strategic ad advisors. All right, so joining us right now after all that background, the man who led that committee we're talking about, the first six months of his existence, Jacksonville City Councilman Rory Diamond. Uh, this report comes, you know, after a year of inquiry by council. Why are the findings important from your view? Well, the findings are important because the people of the city of Jacksonville deserve to know the truth of what happened with their utility, right? So Aaron Zahn and some of his executives, in my opinion, tried to steal almost a billion dollars from the ratepayers, And that's a massive scandal, probably the biggest one in our city's history. And so we had to do our job and figure out what happened. The focus was kind of narrow in some ways and broad in others. I mean, because if you're talking to looked at 600,000 documents, right. you know, all these sorts of things, it's... It, it's really going after uh, everything you could find. But just that legislative piece, maybe explain to people what that means. Hey, here's the scope of our investigation. It was about the legislative component. Yeah, right. I used to be a federal prosecutor, so my favorite thing in the world to do is to get someone in a grand jury room and then indict them and then, you know, see them, uh, you know, found guilty in a court. But that's not what we were doing. We were just investigating to figure out the best we could what happened so that we could change the law so it couldn't happen again. And that's exactly what we did. Councilman uh, Michael Boylan did an incredible job of coming up with all sorts of different fixes and then 19 to 0 the city council came together and passed all those legislative changes that we recommended highlight maybe just a couple of them for people. What are some of the things that would be changed so that this could never happen again? Well, the most obvious one is that it's really, really hard to sell JEA now. Yeah, you'd have to go to the people of Jacksonville. You'd have to have a very large majority on the city council, and the process would be much more you know, open and people would know about it. Yeah. You, you, you led the committee when it started, then there was a change in the president, and, and somebody else led the committee. Right. Did it matter who was leading that committee? Because... Uh, there were times, and as you mentioned, 19 to 0, city council members said, yeah, we're going to vote for these changes. Yeah, Tommy Zuri kicked me off because he doesn't like me, and that's okay. So, you know, we did some great work in the first couple of months. I got a whole bunch of good work done. I think the most important stuff we learned was in those first four or five months when we finally got JEA to turn over all their documents. And we said, yeah, look, these people were really actually trying to steal from the ratepayers and the taxpayers of Jacksonville. Yeah, it... it it see, I mean, and you reference this. People have said this was the most important thing that that council should be looking at over the last uh, year or so. Is Aaron Zahn, the former CEO, is he the, the fall guy, the mastermind, an accomplice? How do you determine what his role was? Uh, well, my best guess is a jury down the road is going to decide what his role was. But if you ask my personal opinion, he was in, in charge of this effort to you know, heist this billion dollars from the people of Jacksonville. And I really do think one day he's going to get indicted. I'm going to put you on the spot here. One of the things the report talked about was that the mayor's office also knew or had some involvement in this. Where do you stand on that? Do you think the mayor was part of this process to have 
uh, the utility sold or, or what have you. So I think it's important to split these things up. There's no evidence that I've ever found that the mayor had anything to do with that bonus plan or that they were going to participate or anything like that. So we have to be really fair to them on that. On the effort to sell JEA, I think if you had asked them a couple of years ago, is this something interesting to you? They would say yes. Uh, if you look back at all this stuff, looks like they were interested in it, absolutely. Uh, but there's no criminal wrongdoing that I could find, just policy that maybe we agree with or don't disagree with. All right. Hey, how, new topic now from uh, Jackson City City Council. So it's a call uh, for a freeze on salary raises. Councilman Diamond introduced a bill this week uh, that would get rid of the built-in pay changes. It would also require city council members to pass a standalone bill in order to increase their salaries in the future. It's known as the NOPE bill, which stands for, as I understand it, No Obligatory Pay Enlargement. Uh, Councilman, why is this important to you, and is there some support from other city council members already? Yeah, we already have two co-introducers, so Councilman Randy White and Councilman Al Ferraro. I suspect that a lot of other members of the council will jump on board. And why this is important to me, last August we were in the middle of a pandemic, we still are sadly, an economic crisis, everybody's frightened, and I look down and I'm getting a $2,300 pay raise as a city councilman. I mean, come on, Kent, that's wrong. By any measure, that is wrong. And I said, listen, before the budget starts again, I'm going to write a rule that says this one happen again. You have to have an like honest, open vote, up or down, if you want to give a salary increase. And I gave mine to charity. I was like, there's no way I want this raise. Other members inspired by that? Or is it they hadn't thought about, oh, what should I do with this salary increase? To be fair, I never like announced what I was doing with it. So it wasn't a challenge. I, I don't want to embarrass my colleagues in this at, at all. I just can't say yes to a salary increase while everyone else in Jacksonville is suffering. Yeah, so let, let's look at some of the numbers here. Uh, 2020 raises for city council, that $2,300 we're talking about. A typical city council member's salary would be about $52,000. And uh, as Councilman Diamond pointed out, the city of Jacksonville is spending more than a million dollars on salaries, $595,000 on council benefits. So you're saying, hey, here's one place where we don't need to increase what's going out, right? Yeah, in, I think, in a pandemic. Yeah, just think what somebody could do with 2300 bucks in their pocket. They could maybe get their rent paid or utilities or feed their family. There's a bunch of things we could do with that money. And I don't think giving it to a bunch of politicians was the right choice. Uh, it, Clarify also, when you're on city council, you're elected, you, you get some money because it's uh, almost a full-time job. But you also have full-time jobs if you're on city council, most of them. Yeah, a lot of uh, my colleagues have full-time jobs. I, I run K9's for years, just like five to full-time jobs, right. it feels like. <laughs> so yeah, it's supposed to be a part-time job. And, and you know, I, I, personally, I think that you compensate it, uh, compensate it like as a, as a part-time job. Uh, final note, 30 seconds. You said things are going great for canines for Warriors right now. Good start to the new year? Yeah, it's been a great start to the new year. So I'll just say this. The people of Jacksonville really rallied to our cause at the end of the year. So we were able to finish the year in the black. So we're hitting the gas and we're going. We've got 340 Warriors on our wait list. So we're, we're going to build the world's largest rescue dog training center down on Highway 1. So we'll get the right dogs in the hands of the Warriors who need them. Yeah, it's always fun to see the graduations and hear those stories from the individual Warriors who say, this makes a big difference in my life. So thank you so much, Councilman. Appreciate what you're doing, Canines for Warriors, and, and representing people in the city of Jackson. Thanks for having me, Ken. All right, stay with us. Lots going on in the nation's capital. Next, my conversation with Senator Rick Scott and his feelings on what's happening there in Washington. Stay with us on This Week in Jacksonville. into the path of an annual migration? Yeah. That's an innovation occasion. Innovation from the freezer aisle to your mouth. Anytime, anywhere. Slightly more aggressive. The 2021 Toyota Corolla. Lease a new 2021 Toyota Corolla LE for just $179 a month for 36 months. Toyota. Let's go places. I'm Jerry. I smoked. And I have late stage COPD. I'm hoping to get on the lung transplant list. But I don't know if I'll be accepted in time. My children are really worried. My tip is, every morning, give your kids a call or send them a text. It may be the last time that you do. Tobacco-Free Florida offers free nicotine patches to help start your quit journey. 1-877-YOU-CAN-NOW. Over the years, people have asked me, how did your firm get so big? The answer is simple. We won a lot. Why do you think some of these other firms are so much smaller? 
Maybe it's because not many people hire them. In this business, you grow by winning. As America's largest injury law firm, we have more lawyers than any other injury firm. Proof's in the pudding. Size is our strength. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. Your mother is a special lady, and on her special day, you promised her a special celebration. But if slow upload speeds won't let your video call through oh. because you have cable, just remember, you're not a bad son. You just need better internet. AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience with 20 times faster upload speeds than cable. Get AT&T Fiber, plan starting at $35 a month for a year. Limited availability in select areas. Call 1-877-ONLY-ATT. Don't you dare. Caught in the act of sibling persuasion? Get down. That's an innovation occasion. Innovation from the freezer aisle to your mouth. Anytime, anywhere. This is our home. We do what we want, and so does the weather. The Weather Authority on News 4 Jax has the local forecast you need to keep doing you. Always watching, keeping you covered minute by minute, so inconvenient weather never takes you by surprise. Always tracking, mapping out major changes, so severe weather never gets in your way. This is our home, and the Weather Authority on News 4 Jax knows the weather better than anyone. Always watching, always tracking. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. U.S. Senator Rick Scott is a Republican, former governor of Florida, and an ally of former President Donald Trump. I asked Senator Scott about the upcoming impeachment trial and holding people accountable for the Capitol siege. It happened on January 6th. I was there. It was horrible. It was terrible. Um, I wish the president had said something right away when they broke into the Capitol. Um, but this idea that, that he told people he broke into the Capitol is wrong. Um, what I've watched up here, everything is just political theater up here. That, I, always, I tell people, this. I'm in the U.S. Capitol, right? Beautiful white building. There's another beautiful white building down at the other end of town where they do shows and they do plays and things like that. It's called the Kennedy Center. That's like what we're doing here now. We're not, if you look up here, what should you be doing? Well, what's good for American families? That's what we should be doing. But we're doing, we're doing impeachment, all right? It's, it's not serious. It's, you know, it's the constitutionally sketchy. I mean, look, the Supreme Court didn't, the Supreme Court justice didn't even show up to swear us in. So it doesn't appear he's going to show up. Uh, so what's he know that, you know, that other people don't know? Uh, the, and, you know, it's, it's just vindictive. Why don't we stop and say to ourselves, you know, we do have a new president. He's doing a whole bunch of stuff by executive action. Uh, probably things that we didn't, you know, anticipate that somebody would do. Um, so why don't we focus on what's important to American family, like, more jobs, you know, better economy, better education, strong military, um, law enforcement, so we have a safe community. If you think about it, lower, lower prescription drug prices, that's what people care about. But what they're doing up here is just, it's just, it's just political theater. It's just what looks like, oh gosh, that looks good on television. We ought to do more of that. Let's do more of that. It's not about helping families. Senator, I think one of the things people are wrestling with is what they saw on television from January 6th is hard to get over and want someone held accountable. And certainly on that day, President Trump said things like, uh, go to the Capitol, fight like hell, um, the election was stolen, all those sorts of things. Doesn't he need to be held accountable for what happened at the Capitol? You know, the people that broke into the Capitol are the ones that need to be held accountable, all right? I mean, that, they're the ones that did it. He said to, to basically protest, I mean, I mean, look, you know, a lot of people say you got to fight for your rights and things like that. That means that doesn't mean you go break the law. I mean, so what I want to, you know, we have a new president. Why don't we get focused on where we're going? I mean, what they're doing is looking back. We have a new president. Let's focus on how do we, well, how do we improve? I mean, I, like I want, I came up here to get something done. Uh, when I was governor every day, what I focused on is how do you make it a better place to get a job, how do you make it a better place for education? How do you make it a better place for a safe community? That's what we ought to be doing. And then we have we have international issues. We got we got to hold China accountable. We've got to hold the Ayatollah accountable. We've got to hold Castro regime accountable uh, for what they're doing. So let's let's focus on the big problems we have, not focus on the past. Senator, so you mentioned uh, new president. One of the things that he did this last week was about buy American. And that's something that sounds like right out of the Rick Scott playbook, right? That sounds like something that's good for Floridians and Americans. 
The only thing better would have been by Florida, you know, by Florida, you know, that would have been a little bit better. But, you know, I've been I've been focused on how do you get uh, the American economy going? How do you get jobs going? I have a bill I've done uh, by American resolutions uh, on the Senate floor. But the but on top of that, I've got a bill that would require companies like Amazon um, uh, and all the online retail uh, resellers to tell us where things are made. So what we got to do is Americans do want to buy American products if we knew where they're made. So I'm glad the pre I'm glad uh, President Biden's focused on that. I hope they follow through and help me uh, get my bill done that would uh, make sure the online resellers uh, would have to disclose where things are made because I think that would have a real positive impact on American jobs. Of course, I want them all in Florida. One of the things your office has also talked about is uh, the debt. There's a plan right now. People need help in a stimulus package or relief package from COVID here in 2021, even after what happened in 2020. Where do you stand on the debt? Because it's growing by leaps and bounds in America. You know, we've got to do everything we can to help the people that have gotten hurt. You know, the people have lost their jobs or small businesses, and I'm all in in, in doing that. Last year, we allocated 4.5 trillion dollars or four point five trillion dollars um you know our economy is around 20 trillion dollars we 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 allocate a lot of money i want to make sure if we need to have money to help the people who have gotten hurt if we got to make sure we have money to get the vaccine out if we need to buy more vaccines all those things i, I really do believe in but what i don't believe in is wasting dollars um you know and, and when i was governor of florida we paid off a third of the state debt in my eight years we added you know private sector added 1.7 million jobs our economy grew and our, and our state revenues grew so we had record funding for education the environment transportation all these things that's what i want to get accomplished up here but up here there's no focus on returns uh, we have $27 trillion worth of debt growing. We're going to have an unbelievable uh, deficit uh, for this for this last, for the year uh, that we're in right now and, and the prior fiscal year. I mean, this is not sustainable. Ultimately, what's going to happen is your prices are going to go up. Uh, you've already seen gas prices start going up already based on some of the things the Biden administration is doing. That's going to hurt the poorest families. If 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 you look at the debt, if you look at the debt, when interest rates go up, and they always go back to norm, when interest rates go up, there's not going to be enough money in the budget for the things we care about. We care about the military. We care about Medicare. We care about Medicaid. We care about Social Security. When when interest rates go up and we're spending a trillion dollars just to pay the interest, that doesn't leave a lot of money for the things we want. I've been reaching out to Senator Marco Rubio's office as well, asking him to join us. And while he wasn't available to join us this week, he did send a brief video message about the impeachment trial. This impeachment trial is a complete, total, stupid waste of time. The bottom line is that we've got all of these things going on in our country, and that's what we should be focused on instead of having the Senate paralyzed for hours at a time, six days a week, for as long as this lasts, to basically put on trial someone who's no longer in office. If a former president did something wrong, they're subject to the criminal justice system. But we should be focused on solving the problems of our country, like the virus, the pandemic, the economic uh, pain that it's causing, not wasting our time on vengeance and playing political games. The impeachment trial in the Senate is scheduled to begin in a little over a week, Tuesday, February 9th. So whether it's by politicians or your friends and neighbors online, the ugliness in political conversation has gotten toxic. We're talking about how that happened and how it may change. Stay with us on This Week in Jacksonville. You can spot danger wherever it is with a class-exclusive blind spot view monitor available on the Hyundai Santa Fe. Get 0% APR for 72 months, plus a thousand bonus cash on the Santa Fe, or the 4250 cash back. Visit buyhyundai.com today. My generator from Generator Supercenter is a great investment for my house. A power transformer blew in the subdivision and all my lights were on, everything in my house was working. There's two or three other neighbors that are putting in their generators now because of mine. It's a great peace of mind knowing that when power goes out, it's not gonna affect us at all. Get peace of mind with a Generac Automatic Standby Generator with solutions starting at 125 per month. Only at Generator Supercenter, the nation's number one Generac generator dealer. Have you or a loved one been wronged by pre-made breakfast? Well, Wendy's has your back. Dropping the hammer with two of these made-to-order breakfast sandwiches for just $4. Get the breakfast you deserve now, two for $4. Only at Wendy's. Tasha, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Aw, uh, fresh vanilla, rocky roll, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough.
switch today and see all the ways you could save. Because injuries to muscles and ligaments don't show up on an x-ray, the insurance companies will use it as an excuse not to pay. But we work with doctors who can see what x-rays can't, giving you a case insurance companies can't ignore. Farrah and Farrah, here for you, here for good. Local stores loaded with those hard to find household essentials. Help families out and snap it. When your morning cup of coffee from your favorite cafe really hits the spot. Planning a productive day with the Weather Authority app, maybe in the garden? Don't forget to snap it. Log in to news4jax.com and become a news 4 Jax insider for free. Then click Snapjax and start uploading your photos today. Do it all and more with Snapjax. Channel 4, the local station. News for Jax celebrates all the great people making a positively Jax difference. Like the great people at Shepherd Center of Orange Park. That's where they found a creative way to honor some seniors in our community for their achievements. We honor volunteers out in the community that give their time and talent to various nonprofits in Clay County. I'm honored to serve our, in our community. Um, there's such a great need. To the Shepherd Center, thank you for making a positively Jack's difference. Life's full of little accidents. And Hyundai Tucson's Lane Keeping Assist can help make sure they stay little. Get 0% APR plus 500 bonus cash on the Tucson or up to 3,500 in savings. Visit buyhyundai.com today. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. Yeah, how toxic are people on social media these days? And how does politics play a part? Joining us by Zoom today, May Habib, the CEO of Ryder. And if you would start by explaining where your company comes in on this topic, because it seems that the examples of awful manners online are endless these days. Morning, Kent, or afternoon, rather. Um, yeah, it definitely uh, feels that way. So we are writer, writer.com. Uh, we are simply a tool that helps people correct their writing. And a big part of what we do beyond grammar and clarity improvements is making sure people are writing in ways that are sensitive and, and healthy, um, which is very important inside companies um, today. Now, what we did starting just before the election was actually turn those algorithms and those machine learning models towards the public conversation happening on, on Twitter. And we've definitely seen some uh, interesting and, and maybe um, saddening results, uh, especially over the past few weeks. Yeah, maybe talk a little about that. As you're explaining, the company uses artificial intelligence and then tracks some real-time data there. Uh, well, can you tell us about maybe the, the state of Florida or even the state of Georgia in terms of language used in these political posts? Yeah. So, um, you know, starting around the election, we saw an increase in the level of toxic language on Twitter really across the country. And, and toxic we define as aggressive, impolite, hateful, uh, racist, or sexist uh, language. Um, in uh, around... Uh, essentially the um, uh, beginning of the conversation around a stolen election or a rigged election, we did see the level of toxic uh, language on Twitter in Florida, in Georgia, uh, really kind of increase. Um, now, Florida, you all are, you know, a little bit more polite than maybe you think you are. Um, uh, you peaked <laughs> at 35% um, on Jan 6. So that's, um, you know, the, the day of the riots on the Capitol, um, which was a huge high for the entire country in terms of the level of toxic tweets on, on, on Twitter. Um, you were at 35%. So 35% of all tweets coming from the state of Florida on that day, you know, had kind of this inflammatory language in it. But then you kind of came back to normal levels. Um, the state of Georgia, we saw peak at 30%, but then really remain elevated um, even till now. Um, now, a lot of that has to do with who is active on Twitter. Um, we track everybody. So, you know, whether right-leaning or left-leaning. Um, and, you, you know, we define inflammatory language, um, I think, I hope, in an objective way. And so we definitely have got things on the left and things on the right that flag um, for um, for toxicity. Yeah, uh, uh, an objective. You said objective. That, that's one of those words that's even hot yeah. button these days. Uh, who's objective and who's not? Uh, when you look at some of the data here, what does it say about how we're interacting with each other? And if it's not healthy, then how do we change it, May? Mm -hmm. So um, starting with kind of that last question, um, being able to remind somebody that what it is they're about to say online can be hurtful, can be harmful. You're going to get a lot of people who still, you know, click tweet or send or, or whatever. 
a big part of how we improve um, the nature of the civil discourse online, though, is for those people who, you know, do need that helpful nudge or who would think twice about posting it, it's, it's just really labeling and letting them know um, what it is that they're about to say and how it could um, um, kind of hit on the other side. And then the other point here to improve the, the, the level of um, civility online, it, it's incumbent upon um, these social platforms to be more explicit about their rules, give people more guidance, and then really enforce those terms of service more consistently. Well, certainly one of the things that we've seen, and it's been controversial as well, is the terms of service uh, being enforced, if you will, by different platforms and banning people or suspending people or that sort of thing. Is this something that, that can change easily if using some better language? So there absolutely can be a more consistent rubric that we apply to everybody. And I think it's both what you say and what your reach is. And some kind of algorithm of those two together um, could provide a much more transparent way to evaluate who should remain on the platform and, and, and who has actually violated the terms of service. And I think Twitter and Jack Dorsey, their CEO, you know, has come out and said, look, like, that was not something I am proud to have done, um, banning um, uh, President Trump. Uh, but we need we need some kind of um, open standard by which we all hold ourselves accountable. And I think AI can help contribute to that for sure. Yep. Well, we're just about to run out of time, but if people want more information about you or the company, is it writer.com, is that correct? Yes, it is, writer.com. And uh, drop us a note. Uh, we'd love to figure out how we can help you right in a healthy way. Yeah, in a healthy way. What a great idea. <laughs> May have been, but appreciate the time this morning. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. So we uh, postponed our visit with state attorney Melissa Nelson this month. So next time we're together, she's going to be here with us. And we're going to be talking about what's happening in the uh, fourth judicial circuit and uh, some ideas she has for her second full term that she's just underway. This week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning. This time I'm Kent Justice. We thank you for watching on air on Channel 4 and the CW17. And you can find us online on news4jax.com. People are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida and South Georgia's number one source for local news.